welcome back to the Porchop Podcast, your host, Brandon Winningham. And today's topic is going to be on friendship and how important friendship is in our lives today. We're going to be talking about the differences between worldly friendship and biblical friendship. So sit back, get your soda pop, and enjoy the Porchop Podcast. Hello, folks. Welcome to the Porch Up Podcast with your host, Brandon Winningham. And today we're going to be talking about the topic, friendship. Do we ever think about friendship? What is friendship? What's the difference between worldly friendship and biblical friendship? I'm glad you asked because that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be explaining the differences that set apart worldly friendship from biblical friendship. So we're going to get right into the topic. We're going to be first looking at what is worldly friendship. I'm going to give you an example. Let's say you're in high school, middle school, whatever grade you're in, and say you have this very friend, to say this person you really admire. You say, man, he's really helped me through a lot this summer. You know, we talk a lot, we text a lot, and we, we just help each other. You would call him maybe your friend or would you say best friend because that person cares for you, he helps you through things you struggle like math, social studies, anything like that. That's a worldly friendship with man, a friendship with man. Now, biblical friendship, what is biblical friendship? And this is it, ready? A relationship with God. Do we have a relationship with God? That is the most important thing that we need to ask ourselves as we come to, to just talk about friendship is, or do we have a truly relationship with God? God says, a friend to get closer than a brother is christ are we close with christ are we walking with christ the way we should that is something we need to ask ourselves and need to mentally think about but again a friendship a biblical friendship is a friendship with god not the world but with god or not with man but with god a relationship with God. So first topic we're going to be talking about is peace. God is called the Prince of Peace, our Redeemer. He is Almighty God. And He is holy. Which means He cannot do wrong. He does not sin. He is holy. We're going to be looking at Genesis and the beginning when Adam and Eve sinned against God. So what happened in the garden? Well, in Genesis 1, 1, God says in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. Isn't that amazing? Sometimes we don't think about this because sometimes it doesn't necessarily come to our minds. We kind of think, wow, God did make everything. And he did. He made pretty much everything in the first day. But not always, not all of it in the first day. It took him more than a week to finish, and then he rested. It is amazing how God created these things in a matter of that many days. Do we ever go to Christ and praise him? Do we praise him for what he has done? And a lot of us don't think about this. A lot of us don't think about our clothes or the food he gives us because we tend to just get caught up in things, worldly things, rather than biblical things. Now, all of us are sinners saved by grace because God sent his son to die on the cross for us. Now, why did he send his, cry, his son to die on the cross for us? Well, John 3.16 explains it very, very clearly. And John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God loved us because he loved us. He sent his son to die for our sins because he loved us. That love is more greater than what our friends say to us, or what your girlfriend says to you, or a parent. That love is more greater than that. God's love for us is just 
unthinkable. Nobody can even fathom his love for us. He sent his son to die for us. And the verse ends, that whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. John 3, 16. So, going back to biblical friendship, we're going to be talking about love. What is love? What is biblical love? Biblical love is, again, a relationship with God, a love for Christ. When somebody says, I have a love for Christ, what's that mean? A love for Christ means you're willing to do whatever Christ is asking you to do. That's obedience, but willingness. Have you ever heard the song, Here I Am, Lord, said me? It's a great, great song. I would I really encourage you guys to go look that up on YouTube. But it is so amazing because some of us don't have the certain spiritual gifts. Like say, you can play piano, but you can't play the harp. God doesn't give you those certain gifts just for nothing. Just like God did not send his son to die on the cross for nothing. He sent his son to die on the cross because he loved us and he wanted not us to see go to hell but go to heaven and so we have the peace that God gives us through his word because he is the prince of peace he's our redeemer he is holy and God loves us God loves us so much that he literally did not have to send his son he did not have to give us clothes he did not have to give us food because, guys, really, in reality, we don't realize that other countries don't have what we have. We have a blessed country that is allowed to worship God freely. Every so uh, Thursdays, we have prayer meetings. We go to the Lord and we pray because we know God hears us and he will answer us because he loves us. But the really awesome thing is that God already knows what the prayer requests are going to be. He already knows what you are struggling with, what we are just angry about, what we are upset about. God already knows all that because God is amazing. Not just amazing, He is holy. Friendship. Now, we've talked about a little in the beginning what friendly, what worldly friendship is with man, but do we have a friendship with God? I'm going to read a verse, and I hope it's encouraging to you. And it's not, it is talking really what we're talking about. And it's going to be describing worldly friendship also. It's in James 4, and it's in verse 4. And I'm going to read it here. You adulterous people, do you not know that the friendship with the world is enmity with God? Therefore, whoever wishes to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. Now, that's talking about not just like saying, say, if you're friends with somebody in high school. That's not saying that. What it's saying is here is that if we're friends with people that are sinners, that are directly, uh, are directly, you know, putting away God, meaning shoving him away, doing things they know it's wrong, like killing people. If we're agreeing, we're friends with those people, and, and they're doing drugs or anything like that, that, that is a big deal. It says, we are with enmity with God. That is serious. So being a friend of the world can mean a lot of things. And in this case, it's talking about the war things we're agreeing with the world, meaning drugs, killing people. We agree with that. We're friends with those people. We hang around with certain groups, friend groups. And we think, well, wow, what is truly friendship? That is absolutely breathtaking because we don't necessarily see that. But when God explains it to us in his word, 
we are realize how important friendship is and how important <clears throat> friends can be to us and how influenced they can be to us. So we're gonna be taking a break a little quick and we're gonna be coming back talking about what is truly, what friendship, how it influenced us around our friends. What is it like when you have Christian friends between the worldly friends? We'll be right back. Welcome back. We're going to be talking about the topic friendship and what the difference is between biblical and worldly friendship. This segment, we're going to be talking about how friendship can affect us and the world around us, but also affect the groups, the friendship groups. So, we're going to be talking about worldly friendship. How can worldly friendship hinder our relationship with others? Well, First off, we're going to say, what is worldly friendship? Worldly friendship is things not, according to the Bible, things are not important. Let's say we're in a group. We're in a high school group. We're talking about things that are not biblical. We're talking about things that we know we shouldn't be talking about, that our parents know we shouldn't be talking about. They don't want us talking about it. We have those friends that tend to skip school. They cheat on their homework, cheat on their quizzes. You have them who are trying to get you to cheat on them. They help you to cheat. They do let, they want you to do the stuff they're doing. They're, you know, drugs or them doing things that are wrong. And they know it's wrong. That is a bad, bad influence on you, but also on others. It is, it's just important. We had, I used to, uh, last year, I went to the Bob Jones Academy in Greenville, South Carolina. And... Uh, you know, one of our our chapel chapel times, I don't remember exactly who the preacher was, but he talked about this and how important friendship is and how important being around that certain group is also important for our lives as well. Because it can ruin our lives as Christians. It can ruin us. It really can. And it is absolutely a very serious thing is that we choose the right group to hang out with. For example, seeing how NFL is going really weird and really crazy with the trades, with Russell Wilson, Matt Ryan. Imagine this. The NFL are in the draft, okay? And they have the option between Matt Ryan and Russell Wilson. They have one option to pick, okay? Let's say Matt Ryan, he wasn't good. His touchdowns, his throws were just terrible. And let's say Russell Wilson was like that bomb. He was, man, he was, he was good. But the team picked, had one team. This team only had one pick between the good guy and the bad guy. Let's say they picked Matt Ryan. You would think, why would you pick him? You know he's horrible, he stinks. What do you think is going to happen? Well, they picked him. And you're not going to see him play well. You're going to see him throwing interceptions. You're going to see him throwing lazy balls. You're not going to win a game, most likely. And your whole team is going to hate you because you picked him. Or you they're not going to like him because he stinks. And it's really bad on the team itself because then it looks like the team stinks also just because of that one person. So in a sense, we are like those people. We pick that wrong group. We pick that one person knowing he he's bad, but necessarily not that. But we're going right back to we pick that one group. We know that group is bad, and that group leads us down to a wrong path and makes us look as though we are bad. And then eventually it leads us down that path. And... Guys, it's very important that we choose the right friendship. Because worldly friendship, it, it really could be dangerous for us as Christians. And if we are believers, we know this because God told us this. That's why he also told us not to marry an unsafe person. Because we have different mindsets. We think differently. So what is biblical friendship? 
Wow. Biblical friendship is when we hope uphold each other. We talk about things that are worthwhile. We, we, or occasionally we could talk about football or anything like that, but we don't talk about things that we know are not supposed to. Biblical friendships when we encourage each other through the Bible. Not through the world, but through the Bible. That's truly the main focus we're going to focus on the rest of this section, segment. Is that worldly friendship is when we uphold each other, we encourage each other in the word. Every Sunday night, we our church has a fellowship. We read, we're reading out a book, and we're going through Revelation right now. That is upholding each other. Now, you think Revelation is like, you know, that kind of book, like, wow, there's a lot of stuff in that book. And there is. There's a lot of scary stuff in that book. But as Christians, it sure encourage us also, because you know what? You're in a group. We get to hear each other's different thoughts on what we think about the book and what we think about the chapter we read. You have that group. It, we are upholding each other. We're all Christians around in a circle talking about a book. We are upholding each other in that group. It's awesome because we actually have friends that think the same way as we do. They're Christians, they love the Lord, and they want to encourage each other. And that is purely, it's that is Christian friendship, biblical friendship. Now we can name a lot of more other friendships, what biblical friendship is. It's not just upholding each other, it's also encouraging each other, I said that encouraging others, not just in a Bible group, youth group. If you guys go to church, youth group is another big example. We uphold each other in youth group. Let's say when your friend, teenager friend, is struggling with something. You know he's struggling with something, and you want to help him. You know he's a believer, and only you know the best help you can give him is the Bible, is the Word. And encourage him through the Word, and pray for him. God says we should pray for each other. God says that. God also says that, well, he says be patient. Maybe your friend is not patient. Maybe he's struggling, he's roaring. But let this be an example here. I'm going to read a chapter in James 5 that I memorized. And it's talking about this very reason with these people that are suffering. So here we go. James 5, and I'm reading in the ESV, so if you want to read along with me, you can. James 5. Come now, you rich weep. Rich, weep and howl for the miseries that are coming upon you, which riches, your riches have rotten, and your garments are moth-eaten, your gold and silver have corroded, and their corrosion will be evidence against you, and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasures in the day, last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who have moved your fields, which you have kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvest have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on the earth in luxury and self-indulgence. You have flat, fattened your hearts in day of slaughter. You have condemned and murdered the righteous person. He does not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is the hand. Do not gumble, grumble against one another. Brothers, so that you may not be judged, behold, the judge is standing at the door. As the example of suffering and patience, brothers, take this prophet who spoke in the name of the Lord. Behold, we consider those blessed who remain steadfast. You have heard of the steadfastness of Job, and you have seen the purpose of the Lord, how the Lord is compassionate and merciful. But above all, my brothers, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or by any other oath, but let your yes be yes and your nay be nay, so that you may not fall under condemnation. And this part I want you guys to really listen to. Is anyone among you suffering? Let him pray. Is any of you cheerful? Let him sing praises. Is any one among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. 
and the Lord will raise him up, and if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another. Pray for one another that you may not that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours. He prayed fervently that it might not rain for three years and six months, and it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heavens gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. My brothers, if anyone among you wanders from the truth, and someone brings him back, let him know that whoever brings him back, a sinner, from his wandering will save his soul from death, and will cover a multitude of sins. Isn't that amazing? We see in the verse 15, And the prayer of faith will save the one who is sick. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. That is by God. God loves us so much that he will forgive us anything if we ask. But this is where I want us to understand what friendship truly is. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it's working. We see a friend struggling with something and we confess it to him. We tell him and we pray for them. We weep for those who weep. And we see, lastly, examples. Christian examples. We're going to be right back. We're going to be talking about that. Welcome back, y'all, to the Port Job Podcast. And we are talking about the topic friendship and what friendship is, what the difference is between worldly friendship and biblical friendship. So we're going to be ending the segment with Christian influences. And we see we've been looking in James 5, and we see Elijah. And it says in verse 17, Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain for three years and six months, and it did not rain on the earth. But what I want us to focus on this whole segment, the rest of the segment, is how he prayed. He fervently prayed. Do we fervently pray for our friends? Do we know what they're struggling with? And maybe we don't. Maybe we see them struggling with something, maybe math, social studies, anything like that. I have a friend, a good example, I'm not going to say her name, but she was in a very, she just, she was struggling with stuff, just spiritually. And um, I went to the academy last year, not knowing what the Lord had in store for me. And my dad said, it would just be a good idea to go to the academy. So I didn't want to go to the academy and I wanted to stay homeschooled because I was homeschooled for a while. But the Lord knew what he wanted me to do. She was struggling in the beginning of the year, and she was struggling with math. She was struggling, struggling, struggling. And I wasn't necessarily sure if she was saved or not, and I was really praying that she, will, uh, that she would just come to the Lord if she wasn't saved. And I tried to help her, and she refused it. So one day I had to make the decision, should I not help her anymore? Should I continue, or should I stop? But I prayed to the Lord, asked him if I should stop. But the Lord said, continue. Don't give up. So I continued to encourage her through the word. I told her some verses. I continued to encourage her each and every day. And this is what's amazing, guys, is that when we are academy, our, the Bob Jones usually has a um, Bible week. Um, and she came to the Lord that week. And that is absolutely amazing. It, I praise the Lord after that. I was so happy and I was overjoyed. And I still encourage her to this day, and I occasionally email her asking, you know, what do you need to pray for? Need me to pray for? I'll pray for you. And that is truly a friendship. Prayer is very important in our friendship. It should be important to us because friendship is important once again, but also prayer in our friendship is important. But what we talk about as friends, and as we, you know, sometimes we can go off topic and talk about something that doesn't really matter, and we see this friend struggling, we should be able to go to the Bible and say, okay. What can I encourage her from the word? And maybe you guys have a friend out there that you know is struggling and he's a true believer and maybe he's not. And you're praying that the Lord will show them that you need, that he is there. He is the Prince of Peace. God is awesome because he loved us. He sent his son to die on the cross for us. But do we pray for each other? Do we tell each other our problems? Maybe not all of them, but do we tell each other 
hey, I'm struggling with this, or a brother, a sister, a very close relative, what we're struggling with. And maybe we are not saved. Maybe we are struggling with something and we just don't know where to put it. We don't know where to go to. And I know one I got your answer for you is that going to God, praying to God, say, God, please help me. God is your redeemer. He's your strength in a time of trouble. He's your true best friend. Yes, you may have best friends on this earth, but he is your ultimate friend. And you can go to him for anything. And God will listen because he loves us and he loves you so much. What is the better friend in him? That is so amazing to think about because God loves us. What's such more greater friend than him? He loves us. And we left behind these men and women of God, an example to us, a Christian influence for us to read about. This is amazing. This, all these people, Abraham, for example, he had to sacrifice his son. God told him, sacrifice your son for me. If you truly love me, sacrifice your son. And he did. But before he was able to even sacrifice his son, God knew how much he loved him. He stopped him. He said, Abraham, you, I know you love me. He knew how much Abraham loved God. Do we have that relationship with God that we're willing to do anything for Christ? Are we willing in saying, God, here I am? Here I am, Lord, send me. Are you wanting to be a missionary? Or you think God's calling you to be a missionary? You go. Because God is sending you. These are such great examples. And let's talk about another example. Jesus himself. People spit at him, mocked him, made fun of him, and he still preached the gospel because he loved him. Is that like you today? If you are getting made fun of because you're a Christian, because you believe God is the ruler and he made you and you believe he loves everybody else, do you get fun of, made fun of because you're a Christian? No. You need to pray to God and ask him for help. I know it is, it is hard because you know what? I have been made fun of. A lot of us have. But we will continue on. We will fight the fight. We will run the race as we set before us. And we will go wherever the Lord takes us because it, we're not gonna, it's not going to become easy for us. It's going to get even harder for us. We need to stay strong. Another example, Joshua. Actually, not Joshua. I can't have you think about it off my head. But this example is such a great example. He was sold into slavery and became king or the governor under. He basically came very close to, he became the governor. God calls it all for good. We, as Christians, have friends. And worldly friends, of course, maybe. And we know these friends are, are not saved. And maybe we have, we have friends that are struggling and stuff, and we are praying for them. We also have Christian friends that are encouraging us through the word and praying with us. So I always want to end with this. Guys, are we praying for our friends? Do we love our friends? Are we willing to do anything for our friends? Because that is truly true Christian friendship. That is true of this friendship in general. So what's the difference between worldly friendship and biblical friendship? Worldly friendship is just with man and nothing else. 
not a friendship with Christ, not a relationship with Christ. And a biblical friendship is a relationship with Christ, and we are willing to encourage each other in Christ. But what we do in worldly friendship, we encourage each other in the worldly, what worldly people say, is that everything's okay, you can be anything you want. And a biblical friendship is encouraging each other, praying for each other, and to go where the Lord wants us to go. So I hope this has been an encouragement, and I'm really excited for what we're going to be talking about next time. I'm very excited to have my special guest with me, uh, Grant Gonzalez. He will be joining me on my next podcast, and we're going to be talking about a little bit about this topic, friendship, and what it truly means to him and to me. And we will uh, very uh, especially enjoy him uh, as he will be here on um, the next episode. So thank you for guys for joining me on this podcast today. If you have not already subscribed to my YouTube channel, it's called Cheese Man. This will be posted on YouTube. Um, also, Facebook. You can shoot me on Facebook, <clears throat> and I can answer any questions you guys have there. So thank you guys for joining me on the Sports Shop Podcast with your host, Brandon Winham, and I hope you guys have a good rest of the day. Adios, amigos.